Welcome back to another how-to episode from Panasonic Pro AV. We completed an episode earlier in the series on the free-to-download PTZ Control Center, a PC-based software that is extremely powerful and free to use for those that want to be able to group and control a large quantity of PTZ cameras from a centralized point. We have now introduced a paid-for software upgrade for PTZ Control Center called the AWSF300. This is an optional upgrade, so if you wanted to try it before you buy it, then we are offering a 90-day free trial by our past site at the time of this recording. Let's take a look at some of its key features. The benefits of AWSF300 enables the management and control of PTZ camera presets through a GUI screen incorporating photos and layout diagrams assigned to the user. Let's see how we can download this powerful plugin for PTZ Control Center. First, I'm gonna to go to Panasonic Pass and we're gonna to go to the Software Download tab. And from there, we're gonna download PTZ Control Center as, we, as we've previously covered. Once I've downloaded, I can then open PTZ Control Center and enter my credentials, which as standard is admin, admin with capital A's. I've pre-designated my cameras and I've input them simply through the camera add tab. And I can see that the UE4, UE70, UE100 and UE150 are connected and providing a JPEG thumbnail. Inside the settings menu, we have a new option here, which says plugin. And we can now see an activation GUI. From here, we can see the option for SF300 for this particular machine. And I can begin the 90 day trial from here, or if I have a key code already, enter from activation. Once this is complete and registered with an internet connection, we're now free to start using SF300. As you can see here in the top right, we have a visual presets tab, which is now available. When we open visual presets, we're greeted by this black screen where we can begin adding our diagrams and photos. To give you an idea of why we're doing this, we can see that the cameras are connected via the network, PC, controller, and we also have a vision mixer connected for this particular instance, as well as a monitor. Everything is done still over IP, and we can begin to map out a system. So this is a basic layout of the diagram, and in this case, we need to take a picture of the environment which the cameras are going to be installed in, where we need to trigger our group presets. So we could either have a parliament setting here, an education setting or a corporate setting, or we're going to map it out where we have the studio inside here. And this time I'm joined by Ollie and Alistair, who are going to provide the preset group positioning. So what we've got here, I've already pre-designated some preset groups. What this means is that all four cameras, I've already pre-designated some presets, which I made earlier. So to give you an idea, I go back to view. And as you can see with the UE4, I've already custom named some presets and color coded them. And I've assigned them to both Dean, Ollie and Alistair, as well as some home positions and custom shots where there might be two members in the shop. I've done this with each camera. The color coding makes it really easy to see the differences between. I can double check this inside the preset list tab as well. So when I select a camera, we know that we have 100 presets in, inside each camera. and gives us a really quick snapshot, making sure that we have all our presets pre-designated. Presets are really simple to designate as well. We can just simply hit set and add a new preset inside and that's it after our positioning. So inside visual presets, I've taken a picture of the studio already and I've uploaded that from our pictures folder, which is quite simple to do. We just simply browse and then we add in our picture. This gives us a template of where the cameras are going to be pointing for the presets. Then what we do is we also add our camera positioning. As you can see in the bottom row here, we have our four PTZs assigned onto a dolly. So I can see the UE4, UE70, UE100 and the UE150. So this gives us accurate position so we know exactly where it's going to be in relation to the preset shot. Finally, we then have the preset groups where I can then add in this blue square here and what that means is we're going to assign where the button I select and where the cameras are going to point to specifically and we can really customize this in a special way. So to give you an idea, I'm now going to switch over to our vision mixer, which is connected to the UHS 500 where we have the cameras connected. Inside, when I select a preset group, I can have a home position. I can select myself. I can select Ollie. I can select Alistair. And also I can select custom individual shots where we have each camera pointing at us and keeping the wide shot on the UE4. I can switch to Ollie and myself, or I can also switch to Alistair and myself. So if I take it back to the individual shots, this gives us a really good idea because what you can see here on the right is I've actually taken the presets from the cameras I've pre-designated earlier, and then I can create these custom preset groups. 
What this means is that we can actually have a complete control system very, very simply just using a PC. What's even better as well is I can actually pop out the visual presets tab and assign this to a touchscreen monitor. So just using my PC that I have here, I'm very quickly switching between the preset shots that we were seeing. So typically this is normally mapped by quite an expensive control system and requires a deep level of integration to be able to achieve. But if you imagine this in some kind of live event or pop-up conference or education setting, we can have these really nice custom groups where they just instantly switch to the preset groups that we've already assigned. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Panasonic Business.